Hello, welcome back to From Prison to the Streets. I'm Eric, I did 11 years in prison, and I talk about prison stuff. Today we are talking about mental illness and disabilities in prison. What happens to someone if they have a severe mental illness or disability? What happens if they have a physical disability and they end up in the prison system? That's what we're getting into. Be sure to like and subscribe. And here we go. There are a lot of guys in prison with mental disabilities. KDOC in Kansas is the largest mental health care provider in the state, as far as I know, or at least that was the case when I left in 2018. Most inmates with mental health problems are placed in general population with everybody else. Someone asked me specifically what would happen to someone who had something like Tourette's and they ended up in prison. Well, I actually knew a guy who had Tourette's and he was in Ellsworth with me and he was fairly normal. He had a, a fairly normal life. Granted, his Tourette's made for some awkward moments. He had some tics, you know, physical movements and some vocalizations that were a little bit outside of, you know, what you would consider normal. Um, but it was normal for him. You know, there was nothing wrong with that, and he was a really nice guy. And he was able to laugh at himself, which probably made his time a little bit easier. He was not bullied. He was not harassed by other inmates. And I think that made a big difference. In prison, if people know they can get underneath your skin, they will. And they will take every opportunity to try to poke fun at you or something like that. But this guy didn't really have any problems. He really didn't. He was a nice guy, had a lot of friends, had a decent job. He was good. People around him and people in the facility were aware that he had Tourette's that was on his file. So, you know, people who worked with him regularly, people who were around him in the pod, they were all aware that he had Tourette's and it wasn't a big deal. Now, there are people with other mental disabilities that are in prison, guys who have been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, for example, and, and things along those lines. You have guys with bipolar disorder. You have people with um, severe depression. And these are all other problems that you might encounter. A lot of how inmates are treated when they have mental health problems such as these is dependent upon the severity of the illness or disability. In Kansas, there is a mental health level classification, or at least there was when I left. I don't know if that is still the case. The lower levels of the system, I believe levels one and two, you might have regular one-on-one -on -one therapy with a therapist. Um, you might get medication for treatment of your problems, but you won't experience any major changes to your custody level, your classification, or your living arrangement. That said, there are a few things that cause problems with other inmates. In prison, cleanliness is a very important thing. When you live in close proximity to another person, when you have a cellmate, you are expected to get up and go to the shower every day. That is a must. You are expected to Take your clothes to the laundry, you're expected to clean the cell. And people who suffer from depression have a hard time doing that sometimes. I've been there. You know, I've, I've struggled with depression myself. So I definitely understand that. But it can cause problems with other inmates. And it can cause you to be regarded as someone who's weird or strange or out there. No one wants to live with you. And if you do end up living with a clean person, you might get in a fight with them. If you're walking around and you're not very clean and you have bad hygiene because of a mental illness, chances are people aren't gonna to wanna to be around you and you're going to be somewhat ostracized. With an increased severity of a mental health problem, you see changes in your custody level or your housing arrangement. For example, if the facility thinks that you are a threat to other people you may be made max custody, which means you won't have a cellmate. You'll be single celled and you won't have a cellmate. Or at least that's how it was when I left in 2018. From what I hear, they are now giving max custody guys a cellmate. 
I don't know if that applies to mental health guys. I'm not for sure, but that's the way it used to be. If you were having some bad problems, they would put you in a cell by yourself. Other things that you might run into if you are a danger to yourself and others or you suffer from paranoid schizophrenia to a, a pretty high degree, then you will be placed in a mental health unit. In the state of Kansas, we have facilities that are for mental health patients. So you might find yourself in True Unit in Lansing, which is a mental health facility. And I was in that mental health facility for um, oh, at least a year, if not a little bit more. And it's a lot like being in SEG, depending on what level you are in True Unit. They had True 1 and True 2. So you could find yourself in a setting that is like segregation and find yourself living in a mental health facility. One of the other things that might happen is you may find yourself in supermax. That does happen. Guys who are cutting on themselves pretty often, guys that are playing with their feces or urine or something like that, they will be placed in supermax. I don't think that really helps the problem. I think that does more damage than anything. Now, as far as treatment goes, the state of Kansas has some programs available. They're not extremely good programs. They don't do much. Their philosophy is kind of, let's medicate you and medicate you and medicate you and not give you any real coping mechanisms to deal with what you're going through. And that is sad. That's extremely sad. Let's talk about some other disabilities. Clearly, mental health disabilities aren't the only ones that are encountered in prison. You will have guys that are in wheelchairs, guys that are amputees, things like that. They do have wheelchair accessible cells. They will supply you with a wheelchair and they will supply you with a disabled aid worker. So you have someone who will push you to the chow hall and things like that and they will assist you in various tasks throughout your day. So if you need to go pick up canteen, for example, your pusher will go to canteen with you and they will help you pick up your canteen. Some people with disabilities will still have jobs. I knew a guy who had uh, an arm missing and he was missing a leg but he was a porter he would go out and he would wipe down tables every day so you can still have a job and things like that and a lot of times they still get along very well with other inmates they don't have any problems they're not bullied or anything like that picking on the weak is not a super popular thing um, at least for some stand-up individuals like if I'm in prison and I see someone picking on someone in a wheelchair, that ain't flying. I'm gonna go confront whoever is causing problems. One of the other disabilities that I saw that disturbed me the most in prison was dementia. I worked in the infirmary in El Dorado for a while and there was a guy back there named Marlon and Marlon had dementia, he was an old man and many times he was out of it you know, but in his moments of clarity, which he had, you know, a few moments of clarity throughout the day, every day, he would look around and he would try to figure out where he was and why. He didn't know that he was in prison. He didn't know why he was in prison. He had no idea where he was or why he was there. He didn't know where his family was. He didn't know where his children were. And that is scary. Imagine waking up one day and looking around and you find yourself in a prison-like setting. And you have no knowledge of how you got there. And your family's gone. You don't know anybody around you. That is scary. So how do they treat guys with dementia? Well, they put them in the infirmary. Sometimes a person with dementia will be assigned a hospice worker. Um, if they're near the, the end of their life and they'll get them out of bed and, and have them walk around and exercise and stuff. But oftentimes they'll end up swinging on their disaid worker or their hospice worker because they're so confused about where they are. So it's pretty sad. You know, I saw Marlon go through a lot 
eventually he was released uh, a few weeks prior to his death he was released but it's sad man it's really sad and the state doesn't do a lot for guys other inmates try to help out you know we try to look after our own but man that's a really sad thing that happens in there anyway i hope this video was informative. I hope it was useful to somebody. That's all for today. I'm Eric. I appreciate you watching very much. I will see y'all later. Break. Break